Win, lose, or tie, Raider Nation till I die. But guess what? It's the third preseason game. And I'm not going to sit up here and say that I don't care if the Raiders win or lose. But you know what I do care about? I care about the Raiders report taking down the 49ers report. And if you hate the 49ers, I want you to click that like button right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Reds here, host of the Raiders Report, and you're watching the inside look up against the 49ers. Every week, I'm going to sit down with the host of our opposing team. This week, I sat down with Chase Sr., and I said, hey, give me your five biggest storylines around the 49ers, and on top of that, what are some of your biggest strengths and weaknesses? That way, I know how the Raiders can take care of business. This is definitely a show more designed for the regular season. It's a lot harder to predict in the preseason, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a look here of what we're going to be doing during the regular season. So our week three preseason challenge, right now we are 2-0. and I want to keep it that way. I want to make this one 3-0. and I need my inside look video to get more likes than our 49ers host. His video is going to go out pretty soon, quite in fact. So if you could help me Take down the 49ers fans who have been a little too cocky as far as I'm concerned towards us Raiders fans. Make sure you click that like button. Make sure you're pulling up for our watch party. Raiders, Niners, Friday night. We're going to get started an hour before kickoff. So our 49ers host's name is Chase, which if you want to give him a follow, you want to check out some of the stuff that he's doing, he covers the Niners and the Eagles here. He's got 136,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, social media. You can find him at Chase Senior. So if you want to ask him maybe some extra questions about what a Raider fan should look for in this game on a deeper level for what the Niners could potentially do, I just wanted to make it easy so you guys could find him. So this game is at late. I mean, it is a late, late football game. And we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. I know last week when we got this game going, it was uh, it was a late night, man. We got out of here 2, two, two 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm really going to be asking the nation to make sure that you guys are ready to go. Get those drinking pants on. Get those party pants on. And make sure you're subscribed because we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling here on the show. And when you look at this matchup, I know that Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew are going to be playing in this game. And it's going to be the Carter, Bradley, and Nathan Peterman show. But, like, one of the things that we got to be able to look at here is, all right, how are the 49ers going to try to do what they're going to do in the preseason? Which then I think helps us figure out what the Raiders could potentially do on top of that. So coming up here, I got the top 49ers storylines entering this game. And for anybody that watched our video last week against the Cowboys, one of the things Tom said was, hey, they're going to try to return every single kick. They did. They returned every single kick. They talked about a lot like what they're going to try to do with Trey Lance. They did exactly that with Trey Lance. He said that none of the starters are really going to play. None of the starters really played. So I think when you know that other side of it, it helps you paint a better picture of what this game could look like, especially in the preseason. That's important. Because we know the Raiders side of it, but do you know the 49ers side of it? Which, again, it's important for the preseason. So the first thing that he said for a storyline in this game is the Brock Purdy struggles. And Purdy's been struggling a little bit. You know, he hasn't had a healthy offensive line, hasn't had a lot of his starters in there, hasn't had a lot of his ones out there on top of that. And I don't blame the Niners for not putting some of their star players at risk. But why this is important is because I want to see some of these backups up against a legit starting quarterback in the NFL. No disrespect to Sam Darnold. He's a fringe, you know, legit starting QB in the NFL. Trey Lance, Cooper Rush, not starting QBs in the NFL. So how does this defense, a backup defense, with guys that are fighting for their job, do up against a dude like Brock Purdy? Let's go to the next tier big-time storyline for the San Francisco 49ers, and it's their wide receiver they drafted in round one out of Florida, Ricky Persall. He hasn't practiced yet. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out there. We've been obviously worried about Jackson Powers Johnson. This is also a player that they're kind of concerned about. If they lose Brandon Ayuk, they need this dude to be able to step up here. If he does get an opportunity to go out there and play, how do our corners go up against him? How do they end up handling that challenge? I would love to see Ja'Cory and Bennett up against him. But again, Antonio Pierce said none of the starters are going to be playing here in this game. We got a few more big-time storylines to get here. One of the next things is around their defense and when you think about the 49ers I know I do personally I think about that defense and they statistically according to PFF have been the worst defensive team in the preseason and maybe it's they're not trying to tip their cap maybe it's they're not trying to go out there and show too much of what they're going to do but these PFF preseason grades are really bad the overall defensive grade worse than the NFL tackle grade 
worst, second worst in the coverage area, fourth worst in the run defense area. So, like, if I'm the Raiders and I look at some of these metrics here, there's no excuse for you not to be able to go out there and at least execute your offense. And I'm not going to judge Carter Bradley. I'm not really going to judge Nathan Peterman. Quite frankly, I'm going to be looking at some of these other positions who I'm really going to look at. Luke getsy has got to be better, but Mitch is just preseason. And I don't want to tip the hand totally, right? You don't want to show a lot of the plays you're going to do in the regular season. But for how as bad as what it was last week, I need to see Luke Getze do a better job, especially in the red zone. Still no Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk, and it would be insane, and I mean insane, if a Brandon Ayuk trade ended up happening maybe today as I'm recording this video, or maybe a Brandon Ayuk tra trade happens during the preseason game. I, I obviously don't think that either of those things happen, simply because the NFL does such a good job of being able to control like the breaking news aspects of it. But this is a really big storyline. And for everybody that's going to be watching this preseason game, I guarantee you this, the announcers are going to be talking about it time and time again. We also had a source reach out to Chat Sports that said, if Brandon Ayuk doesn't go to that Raiders game, the 49ers have been talking about finding him, which could be a bad move in the direction for him signing a long-term deal with San Francisco. The final thing that Chase ended up sending me was their right guard, Dominic Puny, who was from Kansas. This was a player that I thought was probably going to be drafted in round three, round four. They ended up taking him in round three. He's been really good, and he's been playing pretty solid at right guard. I'm looking at Byron Young. I'm looking at Matthew Butler. I'm looking at Nesta Jade Silvera, Marquand McCall. I don't know if Tyree Wilson's going to be playing in this game, but I've seen the viral video of Tyree Wilson getting pancaked, and quite frankly, he might still be buried in that Allegiant Stadium grass. I don't know if he's going to play, but when you know that another one of their players who's fighting for a spot, another one of those players is going to go out there and continue to compete, how does our defensive tackles look against that guy? You're not going to see John Jenkins. You're not going to see Christian Wilkins. You're not going to see Adam Butler in this game. But every other player that's mentioned up there on that screen, I want to see how they do up against a guy like Puny, a player that is already showing you that he has a chance to start here in the NFL. Now, when you look at the 49ers offensive line depth chart, this is from our 49ers show. And I know Puny's there buried a little bit. At least that's what it says. But what's also very interesting about the offensive line for the Niners is our offensive line coach, James Craig, used to coach that unit last season. So how does Puny look? What does he look like from top to bottom? Does he have a chance to start at right guard? I want to see our defensive tackles in a very heated battle look up against a guy like that. Coming up next here, we got the Raiders storylines entering this game. And we can go through them a little bit quicker than I think we did the Niners once, Chugs. But today's show is sponsored by Game Time. If you're looking for those last-minute tickets, I promise you, Game Time I love it personally. I love watching football games live. Now, obviously, we do a lot of watch parties here, but being able to go to college football games is something I love because of the atmosphere. And I can remember my first game that I went to in Oakland where it was the FAB game, for those that don't know. It was Monday Night Football back in 2019 against the Denver Broncos. And the atmosphere there was one of the biggest reasons why I'm a Raider fan now. And there is nothing like an Oakland tailgate, just like there's nothing like game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, for $20 off. Download game time today. What is it? It's game time. Yeah, I love the curated deals, which makes it easier to find the best price in the great seats. Seat views before you buy. That lowest price guaranteed. You have the event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and this new feature, which I got to give Chug some credit here. He was playing around with game time, and he was like, dude, you got to check out these super deals. So the super deal is essentially like the best deal for that game. So right now up on screen is the Raiders and the Panthers game. And right now I'm looking at lower corner, 105 row 8. This is a top 1% deal on game time. So the best of the best. You can get that for $445. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of Raiders tickets out there. $445 for lower corner, 105 row 8. Very good. I also like it because it shows like an amazing deal. It shows great deals. Like there's one ticket that says, hey, this is $34 off right now. And I love the all-in pricing so you know exactly what you're paying for. So if anybody enjoyed what I just said there and you're like, all right, I would love to be able to go to a Raiders game. You want to go to the Panthers game or go to the Chargers game for all y'all out in L.A.? Download the Game Time app. Create an 
account. Use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code CHATSPORTS. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. That link's going to be available to you all down in the comments, down in the description of today's show. All right, let's go to the Raiders storylines here against the 49ers. The biggest one probably, I think, for some fans is going to be Carter Bradley up against Nathan Peterman for that QB3 battle. And quite frankly, I, and I said this when I was live on the show on Thursday, when I look at the QB3 battle, I'm not necessarily looking at who's the best quarterback and if, if Aiden or Gardner were to go down. The QB3 to me is the quarterback that I want that can go out there and execute the offense in practice, right? Like practice, practice squad, somebody that can go out there and do it at a high level. I think Peterman is the better fit for that simply because he knows the Luke gets the offense. But like I am rooting for Carter Bradley because he's the UDFA and I always want people to be able to live out their dreams. So Bradley, I'm pulling for you, but it wouldn't surprise me if Nathan Peterman ended up getting that job. The wide receiver five and wide receiver six battle. Antonio Pierce during Wednesday's practice talked about the depth and the overall players that we have here in this wide receiver room. And when you look at some of the players that are fighting for those final spots, Devontae, Jacoby, Trey Tucker, and then also DJ Turner, those guys are locks to make this roster. They're going to make it. They're good to go, okay? And I actually got to update this depth chart. DJ Turner and Tula Griffin should be flipped. But, like, you're going to be looking at Christian Wilkerson, Rambo Keaton, Tyreek McAllister, Jalen Guyton. To me, all those players, even Tulu, are trying to battle it out right now for that fifth receiver spot. And when you look at practice on Wednesday, which was the final training camp practice, Jalen Guyton and Christian Wilkerson, they were working together as the five and six. Now, again, it's just practice. Maybe it doesn't mean anything, but I do know that this team is really fired up about Christian Wilkerson, and quite frankly, I think I got some crow to eat when it comes to him. Let's go to the next storyline here around the Raiders up against the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going to say it's the ninth and final offensive line spot. One of the things that I mentioned on Wednesday's video was a note that I received that a, co a player person told me was uh, that they believe in eight offensive linemen, okay? That right now, they believe in eight offensive linemen to make that 53-man, but they want to be able to keep nine. So if you're looking to be able to find that ninth player, I'm looking at a dude like a Jordan Meredith. I'm looking at a guy like a Ben Brown. I'm looking at a dude like a Dalton Wagner. Jalen McKenzie has also been a player that has been impressing them from time to time but with some of the injury concerns like a Colton Miller Jackson Powers Johnson which luckily Miller and JPJ both are off the pup list so that's good news there but still it's like are you concerned about the health of those two players? I am concerned about those players. And I think that this coaching staff is also a little bit concerned about the health of those two guys. So with that being said, you're going to see them go out and try to use a lot of different offensive line combinations, I believe, in this game, especially on the interior. So are you worried about JPJ? And when I say are you worried, are you worried he's not going to be ready to go for week one? AP talked about like the fact that He's now out of the red jersey, that he wants to get him ramped up for week one, and that he's hoping that he's going to be able to go out there and he's playing. And quite frankly, I'm hoping that he's able to go out there. But, like, am I worried about JPJ? I am a little bit. I'm actually more worried about JPJ's health than Colton Miller just based on the minor injuries. Like, it's been one after another after another, and the reason why Powers Johnson fell in the draft with some of those injury concerns. I need him to be the starting left guard. The nation needs him to be the starting left guard. It's how we're going to be the best team that we possibly can be. Let's go to the final thing here. And, or, we got two more, excuse me. Is this Byron Young's final game? This might be a hot take, but this is not an impossible conversation where you heard Antonio Pierce talking about Matthew Butler and how much he said that he st it's starting to click up here a little bit. Said that if you say anything you want to Matthew, he's going to end up doing it. Byron, it's just not clicking, man. And this is another one of those dudes that was not drafted by this regime. I know Antonio Pierce was a part of the team last season. But again, like him as a head coach, he uh, doesn't know owe anything to Byron Young. And for a player who has played as much as he has in the preseason, you want to hear a mind-blowing stat? Byron Young has played the most defensive snaps, okay, on the Raiders who is yet to make a single tackle. 44 preseason snaps and has yet to record a single stat. He is the 224th ranked player according to PFF. He has no anchor. He's getting pushed around. And I don't think it's impossible that this is the last time you see Byron Young in a Raiders jersey. 
That's how bad he's been this preseason. And unfortunately, that's how bad he's been this entire offseason. The last thing is this. Is Tyree Wilson going to play? I thought it was strange that Wilson was unable to practice on Wednesday. There's been a lot of speculation around Wilson from people like Jeremy Fowler. I told people after the Raiders and Cowboys preseason game that there was a certain team, it was the Dallas Cowboys, that was looking into potentially getting Tyree Wilson. We talked about it multiple times this week on the show because we were told that the Cowboys were looking for a defensive tackle. I'll say this, and I'll admit that the Cowboys went out, they signed Linval Joseph, so now I don't know if it makes as much sense for them to target a player like Tyree, but the fact that he missed practice on Wednesday and played as bad as what he did last preseason, I know that Wilson was the number seven overall pick, but if he's healthy, he's got to play because until he proves that he can play at just a decent level, you got to be able to figure out a way to get this guy on the right track because he still doesn't look like he's on the right track. And quite frankly, he doesn't look like he's even close to being on the right track. Coming up next here, we're going to get into the 49ers' biggest weaknesses of this game. And again, we're going to kind of look at them like, here are the weaknesses. If I was a coach, how would I scheme against it? In the preseason, it's not as easy to talk about it. In the regular season, I think it just makes a lot more sense for, for that part of the show. Before we get into that, though, I do want to tell a bunch of y'all that we're going to be in North Carolina September 8th when the Raiders play the Los Angeles Chargers. We're going to be doing a watch party, and it's going to be a free watch party. You can get your tickets at chatsports.com slash week one. It is a free family-friendly event as we're going to unite Raider Nation on the East Coast to kick off the 2024 season. Cheer on the Las Vegas Raiders. They face the LA Chargers in week one and be part of an unforgettable week one event with the NC Raider Fans Club. New location, back then bar and grill. We're going to have a live watch party, so if you enjoy doing, watching what we do, you're going to be able to watch it in live in person. You can bring the whole family for an enjoyable day filled with activities suitable for all ages. Enjoy a selection of delicious food and refreshing drinks at our new location, the Back Then Bar and Grill in Cary, North Carolina. You can also enter a chance to win some awesome prizes on top of that. So the video that you see is just like the video of the Back Then Bar and Grill. If you want to see like the raffle that they show, not raffle, the... Uh, Sign? That's not even the right word either. But poster, chatsports.com slash week one. That link's going to be available to you all down in the comments, down in the description of today's show. Also, I'm not allowed to tell you who, but stay tuned for a special appearance. That's all I'm allowed to say. I think some of the OG Raider fans are really going to like it. Chatsports.com slash week one. Flyer, thank you so much, Adrian. I couldn't think of the word. Flyer, man, oh, man. It's not good. Not a good day. All right, we're going to keep it going here. 49ers' biggest weaknesses in this football game and how the silver and black can take advantage of them. We're going to look at it on the offense and the defensive side. You're going to see a lot of backup skill position players, which the Niners, they've kind of been in a similar situation with the Raiders where their backup guys have not looked good. So how does their bad backup players look up against players that have been struggling for us? It's going to be a fun matchup to watch there. The offensive line for San Francisco hasn't been great. So again, this is another opportunity, I think, for us to see do we have some extra edge depth? Do we have some extra defensive tackle depth? Because once I thought this Raiders defensive line was going to be the best unit in the NFL, and we're top heavy. We got good, really top five players. Outside of Adam Butler, John Jenkins, Christian Wilkerson, Malcolm Kuntz, and Max Crosby, I do not have a lot of confidence in a lot of these other guys. Janarius Robinson's been playing well, but again, you know, Janarius Robinson, if he's your sixth guy in your line, that's, that's a problem here. Next thing is the backup tight end behind George Kittle. Kittle's one of the best in the biz. Besides that, though, not a lot of tight end talent. So I want to see how a guy like Amari Gaynor does in this game. I want to see how a player maybe like a Luke Masterson, a Kanai Malga. Those three linebackers, this game is monumental. I don't anticipate that Tommy Eichenberg's going to play. Antonio Pierce said he's dealing with an injury just like Brock Bowers, and it's minor. But, like, there's not a lot of depth here for San Francisco. So our team should be able to take advantage of some of these matchups. On the defensive side of the football for the 49ers' weaknesses, you're looking at the run defense. And this is an opportunity for the Raiders to try to actually run the Rocks. Amir White, Alexander Madison haven't had a lot of success this preseason. So, like, is Amir Abdullah going to get some work? What does a guy like Sincere McCormick look like? Dylan Lowby. Got to be able to figure out our interior offensive line and run the rock a little bit. Third down defense has been killing the Niners, which if you're going to have new quarterbacks like a Carter Bradley and Nathan Peterman, you got to be able to go out there and execute. And I would let them change it up a little bit based on what third defenses they see. The final thing is that defensive line depth. We're fa finding out, battling out that ninth offensive line spot. We got to be able to handle our own in games like this, especially when you're going up against your rival, 
the San Francisco 49ers. Coming up is going to be my prediction for this game. I actually almost picked the 49ers to win simply because I picked the Raiders to win every preseason game, and that hasn't happened. The Niners are five-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under in this football game is at 35 points. I'm going to pick the Raiders to win because I don't really give a shit or not. I, I'm not going to sit up here and say I'm going to pick the 49ers to win in a preseason game. That's just not going to happen. So give me the Raiders to win this one 17-14. I do think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I will take the less on that. I'm just hoping that we see two good teams go out there and the game's not super, super boring, right? So here's the last thing that I want. I'm a person that I, I like being able to go out there and I like challenging the nation because I do genuinely believe that we have the best fan base in all of sports. I told Chase that the nation, they're going to come over to the channel and they're going to take over. So Chase is going to release a video, which I'm going to put for you guys down in the comments and description of today's show. And I want you to go spam Raiders on it. So imagine when all the people on that 49er show, they're going to go through the comments section. They're going to be like, why the hell is everybody spamming Raiders? It's takeover time. We're going to take the Bay back over. So spam it on their inside look video. The link, again, is in the comments and in the description. No matter what, we're going to have a good time tomorrow. Make sure you're tuned in. Make sure you're having a good time. When the Raiders kick off against the 49ers, we're going live an hour before kickoff.